Meaningful research results depend on overcoming a number of research challenges. First, they depend on the reliability and the validity of the measures that we use. Validity refers to the extent to which an assessment tool accurately measures the variable of interest. In other words, how good is the tool that we are using at measuring what is happening in the real world? Using number of hours a student spends studying in the library is probably not a valid measure of studying, since there are a lot of other things that students can be doing in the library, like checking social media or napping. Reliability is the extent to which assessment scores remain constant across time, settings, or raters. For example, we generally think of personality as being a stable characteristic. So we would expect the results on a test that measures personality to be the same, whether someone takes the test in January or June. If someone takes the same test months apart and gets a different result each time, that test lacks test-retest reliability. If two raters grade a personality assessment and come up with totally different results, we would say that that test lacks inter-rater reliability because there is a lack of consistency between different rater scores. Research can also be biased by the way a study is conducted. Experimenter bias occurs when a researcher who knows the intended outcome of the study influences the procedure or outcome in some way, either intentionally or unintentionally. For example, if a researcher hopes a treatment is effective, they may interact differently with the treatment group than the control group. Bias can also play a role for the participants themselves. Demand characteristics are cues leading participants to behave in a way that they think is desirable in a study, instead of behaving naturally. Relatedly, the placebo effect occurs when participants think they are in the experimental group, and their thoughts, feelings, or behaviors change as a result of this expectation. Placebos, or drug-free pills made to look like real medication, can have powerful effects that can mimic the effect of drugs, purely based on the expectations of the person taking them that they will help. To avoid bias from both the experimenters and the participants, many studies use a double-blind procedure, where neither the experimenter nor the participant knows to which group the participant belongs. This guarantees the experimenter treats all participants in the same way and minimizes the likelihood that participants will respond to demand characteristics. Another challenge is sampling, or who we are testing in our experiment. We can't have everyone in a target population participate in the study. We could never get all smokers. So instead, we try to get a representative sample, a group of participants whose characteristics match those of the larger target population. Researchers are also encouraged to use random sampling, where all of the members of a population of interest have an equal chance of being selected to participate in a study. But oftentimes, researchers must rely on convenient sampling, recruiting participants from the easiest to access members of a population. For example, using undergraduate students for a study as a stand-in for the general adult population. Sample size, or the number of people in our study, is also important. Results based on small samples often fail to be replicated in larger studies. This idea of replication is an important one, as it is the cornerstone of scientific studies to be able to reproduce results. Fields in the social sciences, such as psychology, have come under fire after a number of major studies failed to be replicated when they were conducted in new labs. However, this is a problem for all of the sciences, as historically it's been difficult to publish studies that did not show exciting new findings or use innovative methodology. Thank you.